Hello there, welcome back to the channel. This is Nerd World History, and I'm going to open with a slight apology for how long it's been between uploads on this channel. Uh, I've been very busy the last couple of months with work and a few other things, so very busy. Not really had the time to dedicate the, to the research and sort of scripting of one of these episodes. I am trying to get more of them done. One of them is going to be this one, which is a relatively short episode on something that's a relatively recent discovery of a bark and woven shield discovered in, or rather near to, Leicester in Britain. This is an extremely rare, in fact so rare, of a find that it's the only one ever found in Europe. This kind of shield has been seen elsewhere in the world, but no examples have ever been found in Europe, and this is the first of its kind. Originally believed to have been too weak to have ever been used in battle, due to, you know, it being made from bark. But, as we'll get into, rather interesting story behind it. Before we get started, like, share, subscribe, comment down below and check out the other videos on this channel. There is a full playlist where I've been breaking down all the different aspects and individual Celtic tribes of the British Isles, which is a series that's relatively close to being completed now. I just need to get, you know, my finger out and do the rest of them. But this one is on this specific object. This shield was found in 2015. Radiocarbon dating indicates it was from the years approximately 395 to 255 BC was when it was roughly made and it measured 670 by 370 millimeters. It was made from obviously bark, woven material, wood and other basic organic materials. It was very very simply constructed but was actually remarkably sturdy, although very lightweight. As I said, originally it was thought that this thing wouldn't have been strong enough to ever have been used in battle, but actually it's now been shown that you can use it. The evidence indicates that from recreations of this object that have been obviously made through experimental archaeology have shown that it could sustain blows from blades, arrows, and other such things. Obviously it's not as strong as a wooden or a metal shield, but nonetheless, it is very strong, it's sturdy, but it's very lightweight and was probably quite complementary to what was the majority of Celtic fighting styles, particularly in Britain, where they were very individualistic and liked to fight on their own and remain mobile. A light, simple shield like this that would have been very easy to maintain, very easy to repair, and also, more importantly, very easy to make out of materials you could literally have walked out of your house and got, was very advantageous to your average Celtic warrior. In terms of size and basic elliptical design, it was the same design and sort of size as other shields in Britain, such as the fairly famous Battersea shield, although those examples were bigger, slightly, and other examples across Europe were a bit bigger. It was generally in the same sort of ballpark, but it was a little smaller, one-handed, and very light and easy to move around with. Point is, it gave you some level of defense. The central boss of the shield was actually woven together, and is stronger than you would imagine. Now, woven and wooden materials are very common in the Iron Age, but very few examples of them survive to the modern age. They know they were commonplace because enough of them survive, a bit of intuitive logic. They clearly had more bowls and spoons and things than we're giving them credit for, so they clearly didn't make everything out of pot. So a lot of it would simply be made from organic materials like wood and grasses and things like that that would basically deteriorate and very rarely survive in the ground. Now, in addition to that wonderful little piece of information about this, it's also opened up the theory that this kind of shield was probably much more commonplace in Britain and probably wider in Europe than we think. I am personally often very dismissive of this notion of your naked barbarian charging into battle as the Romans described them. A civilization that was so used to warfare and was so good at making swords and spears and bows and arrows and knives and slings and, and was so good at chariot warfare and built great impressive fortifications. The idea that they were so stupid as to never at least carry a shield. Occasionally one of them didn't casually wander into the idea of wearing a helmet or a bit of chainmail, which was actually invented by Celts, is just absurd to me. And this is evidence to that hypothesis that I have, that they were a little more intuitive and not as stupid as the Romans liked to portray them. And history has then painted them as these uncouth savages waiting for the Romans to come along and civilize them. Now, although a shield might not be the best example of civilization, it's certainly an example of human nature. 
And as I said, this shield was, or rather, to this to this date, up to the making of this video, is the only example of its kind ever found in Europe. But this one tellingly does show signs of battle. As I said, they thought it was too weak at first, but it's got a hole in it that was clearly made by something like a spear, maybe a sword, but probably a spear, as well as other minor bits of damage that may have been caused by arrows or glancing blows. It was based on the other objects that were found in the same pit, and this thing was found in what may have been an animal watering hole, which is a common Celtic theme of putting a damaged or unusable token, such as a shield or a sword or a dagger, into water was fairly common. The Battersea shield was also deposited in water, just in the River Thames rather than in a pond. But this thing was deposited with other objects that appeared to be much younger than it, indicating that it had at least 10 years of life before it was discarded, finally. And as I said, as this is the only example of its kind, it is possible that actually it was someone just cobbled it together. It's possible that maybe there weren't lots of these things around. I'd like to hear people's thoughts about that in the comments below. But to me, it's always seemed fairly again, self-explanatory, that they would have had things like this, that it made sense for them to have had things like this. The only thing that is a little vague on this thing is, although it's clearly based on its recreation capable of being used in battle, and to me looks obvious that it's got a hole in it from what was probably made by a spear and some other damage, there is a theory that because they tended to damage ritually an object that they deposited, before doing that, they would bend a sword, things like that, break a knife, to make it unusable, probably so someone couldn't just come and get it out of the water and use it, it's possible that this damage was actually done deliberately to this object and then it was deposited rather than it actually being used in battle. So, you know, who's to say exactly? In terms of general appearance, again, this was a ma the predominant material was made of bark. It also used wood to strengthen it, running through the bark at the back. It had a wooden handle, the woven boss, and of course it had a wooden rim, which was basically they would steam it, heat the wood, bend it around the thing and then they would clamp the shield to hold it straight while everything set and it would make the shield sort of bend against itself to make itself make itself stronger basically so it took a weak material and they figured out how to make it stronger pretty inventive people back then you don't give them enough credit really but that is pretty much all we have in this as i said it's a relatively recent discovery one i personally find quite fascinating and as a person that has an interest in military history I find compelling the idea that shields like this, although basic, were in widespread common use across Europe before the Romans turned up. Now, there are obviously examples of more sophisticated pieces of military technology being used by the ancient Celts. I imagine a lot of it hasn't survived, but really, really simple everyday items like this for general, in for lack of a better term, infantry use, I can imagine were produced en masse. An object like this was so cheap and so easy to make for the people that had the skills back then, they could have mass produced this thing in huge numbers and equipped a small army quite easily and quite quickly. It makes sense for a society like the Celts. But, as I said, let me know in the comments below what you think. And that brings us pretty much to the end of this video. I'd just like to say a thank you to everyone for watching that video. I hope you enjoyed it. I really enjoy making these. If you did enjoy it, please consider giving a like, share and a subscribe and maybe checking out the other videos on the screen right now. And in the description box below, there are links to my other social media accounts.